The question that I get asked the most is, I'm interested in being a witch or witchcraft or spell work. Where do I start? I mean, when I think about where do you start, it's like I imagine walking into a room filled with millions of books and asking which one do I read first. But that's just because in the world of witchcraft, there's so much knowledge out there that it is really hard to know where to start. Which is why my mom and I, Kat, created our meetup group, New Witches Meetup, so that we could start answering questions faster. Because oftentimes you can find information, but you don't have somebody that you can talk to to get answers. So if you haven't, join us on the New Witches Meetup. We have meetings on Mondays, sometimes Thursdays, but it's all on meetup.com. So that's your first thing. If you wanna have a conversation with us, you can comment below and we'll get to your questions, or you can come and see us on a live meetup, which are free. So where to start with the question, I'm interested in witchcraft, where do I start? The first thing that I would ask you is, where do you wanna start? What drew you in? What did you hear, see, experience that said, I think I'm gonna go figure out what witchcraft is, or I'm interested in the witch life, or is it the spirituality of it, connecting with the nature side of it? I mean, these are all ideas that you can start down a path. It doesn't mean that you have to stay down that path. It's just the many branches of the tree that you'll be growing while you learn about witchcraft, witches, spiritualism, paganism, Wicca possibly, but that's, that's a good starting place. So if you're interested in witchcraft, and you're kind of wondering what books to go after, Wicca or just witchcraft? Here's the difference. Wicca is a religion. So if you want to get involved with something that has all the rules written out for you, it has a creed that you say or the Wiccan read, it has things that have been outlined, it's an actual religion that was made, uh, that was recognized in by 1986, and so this has a following because it has standards. They have a hierarchy within their organization. Um, so that's Wicca. And, and Wicca, you can be a Wiccan, you can practice Wicca, and not actually be part of a coven or a Wicca church. But you can just learn about the religion, follow the rules and the things that it tells you to do, and then just practice in that way. On the opposite end of this, which is what I am, it's just a spiritual person who follows the witch's path. So with this regard, because it's not a religion, you can do our favorite saying, which is we do what we want. Meaning that you can jump from area to area, you can choose the things that you do at your own will. There's nothing that you're doing wrong. You don't have to follow what somebody else says. Now, there's a plus side and a negative side to this, right? Because with Wicca, you have things laid out for you in an organized structure of what to learn, when to learn it, how to learn it, with who. And when you're a solitary, you're really on your own path. You decide your next step. You decide your first step. You decide how long you'll stay in these phases of knowledge, how much time you commit to it. When you're part of a coven, one of the first things they say is that the coven comes first. So whatever they have assigned for you, you need to be doing. If you are ready for that obligation, take the plunge. Find a coven, which I don't know how to find. That's another thing. Where do you find reputable covens? Um, if I get that resource, I will put it out for sure. But with solitary witches, you just, you pick up a book or you watch a video or you learn something new and then you apply and practice. That's it, it's that simple. If you wanna get into tarot cards, you just go buy your own tarot cards, you read through it, you learn about the cards, you practice, you make a habit. Every, every time you go to read your cards, maybe you have a ritual set up where you get specific crystals out, you always light the same candle, but you do it in a way that you've made for yourself. There's not gonna be anybody there to tell you, do it this way, that way, not this way. It's all gonna be based on your intuition. Which brings me to our next point. Are you wanting to go by knowledge or just your intuition? Because you can be a witch or a practicing spiritual person and you don't have to follow anything that anybody else has written. You can buy all the things necessary that they have that you've seen that you're attracted to and you don't have to ask anybody else 
how to use them, what they're for. You can just go about it in an intuitive way. Often, you know, we'll get things from the spice cabinet and think that they smell good or they're fun and throw them in smells. And then later you find out, oh man, the thing that I wanted, that spice is actually associated with that thing. So that's just using your intuition. And there's no right or wrong way. So if you want to start with book learning, which is what I did, I'm a book hound, a bookworm, a book everything. I love reading. I love new knowledge in books. You can go that route. But if you want to, you know, take online courses, there's that now. You guys, this is the most fantastic time to be a witch right now because the information that is available at our fingertips compared to when I started like almost 25 years ago, I was having to down th download things freshly off the internet, which the, you know, internet pages way back when in the 90s were not something <laughs> that were easy and the downloading speeds and like, oh, it was a, it was a wreck. So even just getting reputable publish publishers for books with good knowledge on witchcraft or spells or rituals or ideas of the sorts. I mean, we're really living in like the golden age of the witch. It's beautiful. So the resources are out there. The hard part is sorting through them. And that's probably the biggest thing is why the feeling of where do I start? Because there's so much out there. Where do you start? So for anybody who's new and hasn't started writing anything down, or if you've started, here's an idea. Get two notebooks, okay? They don't have to be very thick, just small notebooks. And the reason why you want two is because one is gonna be for references, like where you find stuff. That's something that I wish I had from a long time ago. I found websites or I found a book, you know, in a library because when I was in the military, I couldn't buy every book and they didn't have e-readers back then. You could buy it online or something. So I had to, I had to write down references where I found things so I could come back to them later. So a reference book of things like, oh, this is a good page or this is a good person. You have your reference book. Then a slightly larger or thicker book for you to use would be for knowledge that you've learned that you really like. This will help you decide a path to go down because at first you're just, you're picking up sticks. You're just kind of like, this seems good. I like this. I, you know, I learned about that a little bit. Somebody talked about this and it felt interesting. Your interest might be all over the place as it was for me, in every direction. But learning 10 things at one time, you don't get good at any of them, or it doesn't stick for you. So if you write down things that you wanna learn, things that you are learning, resources on where you found them, then you have a path that you can go back on and say, oh, I remember that one article I read that put this thing really well. So that's the next thing. As you start reading and researching and looking into the beliefs of others and how they practice, you're going to start gaining a sense of self and what feels right to you. As a solitary witch, I've created my own practice well before there was a ton of books on the internet. So the way that I feel about my tools or the way that I do my rituals is a little different to how people write about it today. And I didn't have another witch to practice with, so I just built everything off of what I thought felt right. And it's evolved over time, of course, but in the beginning, everything was very simple and it didn't take a lot of thought because there was not stuff to sort through, just my own brain on how did I want this to look? How did I want it to feel? What did I want to say? I created my own spells. So as you start reading other people's ideas, that sort of gets in the way of your intuition because you feel like you need to remember something that was right, that was written, but you don't, you can, you can take down bits of knowledge that feel right to you and then the rest leave it behind. I love this Walt Whitman quote that says, um, like re-examine everything your heart knows and whatever offends your soul, leave it behind. That is such a bad, <laughs> that is probably not any of the way that it goes, but it's how I remember it. But it, it's just whatever offends your, whatever doesn't feel right to you, which is what he's saying, let that go. Don't hold it and try to find truth in it if it's not meant for you. It's just another person's experience. You get to create your own, which is part of the magic of becoming a witch in the first place. Like maybe I missed that a little bit when I was new. So anything new that pops up, I'm like 
on it. I can't wait to learn about it. But in the beginning, all the stuff coming in was what built up my confidence in myself, my you know drive to go out there and try new things, try new rituals, be in a new place, sit with myself. I mean, I've gone through the plethora of all of the different areas of witchcraft or spiritualism, palmistry, numerology, spell work, tarot, meditation. I mean, anything that you can use to get you more in touch with your inner self, your inner soul, the spiritual realm, if that's something that you take in. You know, being a witch is really about connecting with the cycles and with Mother Nature. That's the essence of it, is reclaiming power that we lost because we're in the modern day. And if we had been living out in tents on a plane somewhere, we would be connected to the earth so much that it wouldn't feel hard. Now it feels hard. We walk on sidewalks, we barely ever walk barefooted. I mean, we don't see nature everywhere unless you live in really awesome areas that have big green spaces. But that disconnect is what has led us back around to spiritualism because we realize that there's something missing. And religion, in all of its glory, doesn't offer a connection to the earth. It, it offers a connection to something else. The best thing you can do at this juncture, if you're new or in, you're in the middle of your journey, is to sit down with one question. What does being a witch to you mean? Whatever you think it means. It, I mean, it could be the aesthetics of the way a witch dresses. It could be feeling that supernatural ability that comes with being really spiritual and having that foresight of things that like the intuition part of it, you know, knowing that there's going to be things that happen or feeling something out, reading the room, reading other people, whatever it is that you believe being a witch is for you. Write about that. Explore that within yourself. Oftentimes people come to witchcraft because religion has not worked, whatever religion you're from, and they're seeking, and people are seeking something deeper. They're seeking a connection to something that's older than religion. Religion is only 3,500 years old, maybe 4,000 years old. It's really not that old. When they first started writing laws about, you know, gods from wherever and and really getting into the you know rules and regulations of religion that's religion when one person has put together a doctrine to control other people and tell them how they practice their spirituality that is not that old we have been humans like this for 10,000 years so before all of that religion we were pagan we were of the old country we were herbs and grasses and sleeping under the stars that's what attracted me to being a witch because I felt more alive and more connected being in nature than I ever did in a church. So when you explore that, what is a witch? What does it mean being a witch for you? The other part of that is, what do you want from this practice? That can help you go in a direction with knowledge, to seek knowledge that helps that, whatever it is you're looking for. I hope you guys found this video helpful. I know that like in the broad spect of where to start in witchcraft or being a witch is like, it's so crazy. There could be a hundred paths and for each person it's different. Everybody starts in a different way. Everybody gets introduced to witchcraft in a different way. It's always different. No two stories are the same. So for you, you get to decide what your story is and how you're going to live it. 